Aquarius, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we have a reading for you. No particular subject, we're going to take an issue. Something we know, something we don't know. Recent past advice and potential outcome. At the end, there'll be an opportunity for an extended where we'll dive in deeper. You can watch this for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your 11th house, this could be for you. You know the drill, guys. Thank you for all the support. However it comes, like, share, subscribe, comment, all helps the channel grow. Crosswatchers, you're more than welcome. Message may well be for you. All the information is in the description box. Just hit the more button below. Uh, private reads are still available for one more week until I take a break. Big, big, big back-to-back -back 12 house new moons. If I don't rest, the universe will take me out. I know it. I can feel it. Um... So yeah, if you do want to get in, get in quick, there is a code for 12% off for the 12th house. Uh, do check out the Instagram post or the YouTube community post um, for details. Okay, Aquarius. One more. What have we got today? We have the Page of Cups. Okay. Why do I feel like there's butterflies in somebody's tummy? Somebody nervous about something? What do we know? Oh, you could be feeling vulnerable about something. Interesting. What we're not aware of. Recent past. Okay. blatantly going to be like the sun or the moon or something uh, or it's going to be significant anyway advice and uh, potential outcome okay no sun six of cups sun in scorpio ace of pentacles four of pentacles sun in capricorn magician tower emperor that makes sense actually because i was gonna i was gonna look for the tower and the emperor um okay Okay, I don't, well, I don't know what's going on here. There's there's a feeling of either butterflies or a fear of vulnerability of some kind. The, the universe is trying to bless you with something here, but it requires you to get over some sort of either nervousness or I don't know what it is. This could be having the nerve to... speak into existence what it is that you desire it almost feels like it, this could be imposter syndrome if i'm honest i'm kind of getting the energy of calendula um for the um in the herbal astrology uh it's the sun and the moon is is calendula it's it's no, no, it's just sun um is it sun and moon? can't have one anyway Okay, herbs of the sun, yeah, just the sun. Innocence, childlike, childlike joy, humility, purity, new beginnings, trusting in life, vitality, reversed, broken innocence, lack mindset, inability to access manifestation, resistance to new beginnings. What are you resisting? There's definitely a resistance here. There's like a shyness. It's like... Um, yeah, imposter syndrome. Uh, yeah, Black Moon Lilith. I'm getting uh, Black Moon Lilith in Capricorn. This this will all make sense when I go through it, but I just want to... Black Moon Lilith in Capricorn. Elevated sta status. Imposter syndrome is creeping in and you are doubting your accomplishments. The cosmos wants you to let go of insecurities and have faith in yourself. When this card shows up, the opportunity to level up and gain recognition is well on its way. Don't let fear, self-sabotage, what's to come. Break the glass ceiling and shift the structures that are holding you down. Dark divine feminine shadow work. It's time to release attachment around power and recognition. Instead, align with your soul's purpose. This will make you more magnetic versus repelling the opportunities that materialise for you. Dark divine masculine shadow work, control can be a toxic masculine trait. In fact, the best way to alchemize this shadow is to provide stability and security to those around you. Where have you not supported the feminine energy in your life? 
what or who has questioned your authority? It's time to challenge imposter syndrome. That's definitely, definitely what I'm feeling from this. There's, we've got this page of cups. This, there's a little bit of naivety or, or you know, butterflies sort of thing. What we're aware of is the Seven of Swords. Now, the Seven of Swords, yes, can be a card of deceit and things like that. But I, I'm literally taking it as its astrological placement, Moon in Aquarius. And the reason why I feel like there's some something shy and innocent about the um, um, Page of Cups here um, is because if we break down the Moon in Aquarius, it's the High Priestess meets the Star card. So it's the High Priestess dressed as the Star card. High Priestess is clothed. She's very well covered. I mean, literally... The only thing you see of her really is is this bit, whereas the star card's naked. So it, there's there's something about embracing some sort of vulnerability here. What we're not aware of is the nine of cups. This is a wish fulfillment that comes from breaking through the ceiling, but it's delayed. It's delayed until it does this. Why is it delayed? Because it's Jupiter in Pisces. Jupiter, the wheel of fortune, meets Pisces, the hangman. The hangman is delays. It's like the universe is trying to bring you a wish fulfillment here. But the blockage is something to do with either um, imposter syndrome, whether it's feeling like you're not good enough, whether you're not worthy to, you know, that you could have a thermal, a thermal. Um, oh, who said this? I read her book. Eliza Kelly, um, the astrologer, and she spoke of the financial thermostat. And you could have it capped. It's like I, I can't, I can't go above this. You know, it's it's it's, it's a whole generational. We 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 wear this level, and that's it. And we're not going above that. Breakthrough. You you you're more than capable. Recent past is the three of swords. Now the three of swords is reminding me of that calendula aspect. Don't let the past or the pain of the past hold you back from the wonders of the future. Um. And whatever that rep represents, you know, is it was it a power of in, somebody in authority that ridiculed your work, making you believe you weren't good enough? Whatever it is, that whatever this energy that has created this imposter syndrome within you, you need to recognise that it wasn't based on you. It was probably based on what energy they were projecting at right at that moment. Um, and you get to sidestep this. You get to rise above it. Now, the advice is the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is here for two reasons. It's breaking through that glass ceiling because the Ten of Pentacles is, is just wealth. But it's also um, Mercury in, in Virgo, so the magician meets the hermit. The magic is within you. Ten of Pentacles as well, if we look at it as an um, astrological chart, is the Tenth House. It's that Capricorn energy, Black Moon, Lilith in Capricorn. Something here about imposter syndrome and why it's... It's like the universe is trying to elevate your status here, but there's just something that's blocking it. The outcome is the Two of Wands. The Two of Wands is Mars in Aries, so the tower hits the Emperor. I feel like there's a big shift that's coming in here, but it's going to align you to whatever needs to happen. So there could be a big sudden energy that happens to a masculine, a boss, a leader, a father figure, whatever that represents for you. Or this could be you. You might have to go through a, a tower moment to recognise you know, who you are. Interesting. So, Wheel of Fortune and the um, Hangman, definitely. And I also want to see where you guys are with the High Priestess. Why Why is the High Priestess not wanting to uh, um, be vulnerable here? Interesting as well, um, Moon in Aquarius in the Moonology is time to show the world the real you. I think you. I think you're too small. I think you need to either branch out, follow your passions, whatever it is. Um, be seen. High Priestess is with the Two of Cups and the Fortitude card, but it's um, it's card um, it's Leo's. It's strength. It's your opposite sign. The universe is is asking you to do something different. What that means for you, I have no idea but it, it, it requires you to do something different because the universe is trying to have, uh, align you with with 
joy, love, connection. Two of Cups in a different deck is Law of Attraction. It's like you, you're drawing in the right things, but then there's some like vulnerability that's like, oh no, I can't be seen. I, you know, I have no idea what it is, Aquarius. Um, but it's actually holding you back, whatever, whatever it is. Wheel of Fortune is with the star card and with Judgment, which is you guys. Uh, star is you guys. Um, Wheel of Fortune is with the um, Eight of Swords as well, which is Jupiter in Gemini. There's a significant shift that's coming from, Ju from June, no, May, when Jupiter moves into Gemini. It's going to move into your... Oh dear. Uh... Oh my God, why is this taking too long? Fourth house? Fifth house. Fifth house of romance, creativity, children. So... There's, there's a significant shift that's happening soon for you. Um, yeah. You feel it coming. There's something about your intuitive nudges here. And the hangman, this pause, is because you're still on a wheel. You're still on the wheel of shadows. Uh, we've got the Knight of Swords and the uh, Two of Pentacles, Jupiter in Capricorn. Wheel of Fortune meets the, the Devil. I, I don't know what this... Is Is this holding on to pain of the past? Is this having resentment? Is this having f frustration? Is this having um, regret, resentment? I've said resentment. Regret, anger, frustration. Ho'oponopono is a powerful prayer. Um, but yeah, this is... This is last, what's the last card? Last card is the Eight of Wands. So we move forward quickly when you really, you know, show the world the real you. This imposter syndrome is, is fear and fear is an illusion. So the High Priestess needs to start <laughs> undressing <laughs> uh, because you, it's, time to, it's time to be seen. Time to be seen, um, Aquarius. Okay, in your extended, uh, I want to see what this tower and the emperor is about. Uh, this two of wands energy. Two of wands tends to indicate a decision that needs to be made. Um, I think something has reached a um, saturation point or, you know, ten of wands is, is a lot of obligations of some kind. Um, so there's a big decision that's going to be required and it might be, it might come as a bit of a shock to some people. However, what I want to say is everything aligns, every, all roads lead to Rome. So even if you make a decision, um, that you know you, you you change your mind later on, it doesn't matter. There's there's always that opportunity to to uh, to, to shift. But yeah, get rid of this imposter syndrome. It's uh, it's not you. Confidence looks better on you. So adopt your opposite sign. All right. So yeah, in your extended, we'll take that energy, see what happens. Saturn in Libra, Moon in Aquarius, Jupiter in Pisces, Mercury in Virgo, Mars in Aries, Sun in Scorpio, Sun in Capricorn, Gemini, Virgo, Scorpio, Aries, Aries, Saturn in Sagittarius, Venus in Scorpio, Capricorn, and Mars in Aries. Okay. Let me know. See you soon. We've got cups, we've got pentacles, wands, swords. Everyone's here. Take care. Bye.